Well, hello and welcome to the video companion for chapter three for Head First JavaScript Programming. And in this chapter, we're going to start to stretch your brain a little bit. And in chapter two, what we really did is we took a problem, we broke it down, we translated that into an appropriate set of JavaScript statements. And we learned to really write in this top to bottom way. In chapter three, we're gonna learn about our functions. And so we're gonna learn how to take bits of code, abstract them away, and to be able to call on those abstractions to get things done. So we're gonna start the chapter and we're gonna go through a little code review and we're gonna review a piece of code which is a little problematic. It's a little repetitive, it's a little hard to read, and it can actually be cleaned up a lot. And it can be cleaned up using a JavaScript function. And so we're gonna step through how to create that function, how to work that function into our code, and how to vastly simplify our code in the process. Now we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about exactly how these functions work. How do you define one? There's a set of things that you can pass to a function. We're gonna talk about how to do that, how those things act once they're within the function and that code within the function is executing. And it's really important that you get these fundamentals down because we're gonna take functions a lot further in this book. There is a lot you can do with functions beyond what we're gonna do in this chapter. So you want to pay special attention to these and make sure you really get the syntax and the semantics of how to use functions down. Now, one thing I should say about this chapter that's a little different from the first two, and it's gonna be a lot different from the rest of the book where we're gonna have a lot of code examples and we're gonna be building some fairly significant pieces of code, at least as much as we can do within a book, is that this chapter isn't so much code heavy as it is exercise heavy. And the reason is because we really want you to get the fundamentals of functions down and to do that, you really need to go through this process of seeing how they're called and how the code within them is applied. Now, another important thing about functions is this whole idea of passing things to functions. What you can do in your code when you call a function is you can pass a set of arguments. Within the function, we call those parameters, and those parameters are like variables within that function. And so we're gonna talk about really the semantics of what happens there. And again, it's really important at this point to understand that because we're gonna be doing more complicated things a little later that will just rely on that knowledge. Now we are gonna spend a little bit of time talking about the edge cases around functions. That is, have I passed too many things or have I passed not enough things to a function and how JavaScript handles that. As you know by now, JavaScript's a really flexible language, so you won't necessarily see a runtime error pop up if you do those sorts of things, but you should know how your code is going to behave. The other thing you can do with functions too is return values from functions. So we're gonna spend a little time showing you how that works. And then finally, we're gonna come back and really just nail down the anatomy of a function and how one is specified. Now, another topic that comes up when we're talking about functions is, so far we've seen global variables. That is variables we define at the top level of our code and that happen to be visible throughout all of our code. You can also define variables within functions. And when you do this, the visibility is a little different. The visibility of a variable within a function is just within the function itself. And we tend to call this a local variable. It's an important concept and in general, locals can be used to create more manageable code than creating a lot of globals. And so we're gonna spend a little time talking about scope, how that works, and really looking at the lifetime of variables. Now, one other thing you should pay attention to, there's an interview and there's a fireside chat in this chapter, and uh, you should treat those as important pieces of these chapters. What we try to do is really give you a few different ways of looking at different things in this book. You'll get some new information out of these interviews and fireside chats, but you also get uh, a repetition of some of the information or a slightly different way of thinking about the same thing that we've already taught you. So you should really treat these as important and you should go through them in detail. Now, as I said, this is a very exercise heavy chapter and the last exercise is the thingamajig. This is a piece of code that is in the style of Dr. Seuss, if you read it. And so your job is to go through this code and figure out exactly what it's doing. So we'll leave that for you. There's also at the end a little bit of information about code hygiene in Webville, which is really just another way to say some best practices around how you use variables and functions together. There's a nice little who am I exercise to review all the terms that come up around functions, and there's quite a few. 
And finally, we end with a five-minute mystery. It's a little whodunit in the style of Sherlock Holmes, which involves a piece of code which apparently can steal money from a bank account. But after Sherlock takes a look at it, he discovers there's really no problem at all. And so your job is to figure out why he's so confident that the robbers aren't going to steal any money with this code. And finally, don't forget the bullet points and the all-important JavaScript crossword. And that's it until chapter four.